This recording will demonstrate centralized payments. Centralized payments allows you to make payments in one legal entity on behalf of one or many legal entities. In addition, you can settle invoices and payments in a single legal entity across multiple legal entities. Before you can use centralized payment, you must do some basic setup. The first setup is in the organizational area. We'll go to Setup, Organization, Organizational Hierarchies. Here you'll create an organizational hierarchy that represents the companies that belong in your centralized payments boundaries. We have one set up already here. It's called Centralized Payments. And we'll go ahead and view this. And notice when we view this, there are three companies involved in this hierarchy. CEE is the main company, and then the two subsidiaries are CEU or and CEEI. This means that you can make payments on behalf of CEU or CEEI or any combination of the three through the use of centralized payments. Once you set up the hierarchy, then you need to assign a purpose to it. I'll go ahead and click on the purposes button here. And the purpose that you'll want to assign is centralized payments. Once you set up that purpose for this hierarchy, you can now use centralized payments to make payments across your companies. I'll go ahead and close this. The next setup that is done is in the general ledger module. So we'll go to general ledger, setup, posting, intercompany accounting. And in this area, you must define the relationships for discounts and exchange rates between each of the centralized payment companies. In this case, CEEI has been set up so that any posted cash discounts will be posted in the legal entity of the invoice. The exchange rate gains and losses will be posted in the legal entity of the payment. And as you can see for CEU, both cash discounts and currency exchange rates will be posted in the legal entity of the invoice. Now the last setup that you'll want to do involves vendors. To make centralized payments work, vendors must be connected to the global address book between each legal entity. So let's go ahead and look at the global address setup. I'll open the global address book. And as you can see, we have a number of organizations and people in the address book. Let's take a look at one called Pink and White Marketing. Notice that in this company, you can see that Pink and White Marketing is a party. And on the right hand side of the global address book, you can see the roles that they play and the different relationships that the vendor has. Notice that in company CEE, Pink and White Marketing account number is 8003. Also in company CEU, Pink and Marketing also has the number of 8003. This relationship, by having them as a vendor in both CEE and CEU, finishes the connection between the two companies and allows you to process centralized payments for that particular vendor. So now let's do some centralized payments for Pink and White Marketing. First though, let's take a look at the transactions that Pink and White Marketing has in the CEE company. So to do that, I'm going to go to Accounts Payable to the Vendors page. And we'll go ahead and restrict that by Vendor 8003. Take a look at the transactions. And you'll notice that in CEE, we have a vendor invoice for $1,000. And we have a vendor payment also in the system. And that is for $500 US dollars. Now let's go into CEU and do some centralized payments. I'm going to switch companies and we'll select our CEU Contoso West company. And again, let's look at pink and white marketing. If we go ahead and go into the vendor page, once again, I will restrict this page to vendor 8003. And we'll take a look at the transactions. And you can see that there is an open transaction valued at $500 for that particular invoice. There are a few ways to apply centralized payments. One is through the payment journal, the other is through the payment proposal process, and finally you can just settle the open invoices, um, open transactions against each other. So let's go ahead and go into the payment journal. I'll open up the journals, 
payments, payment journal. We'll create a new payment journal and we'll select to go into the lines area. The default is the current company that we're in, which is CEU. And let's enter that account number for our vendor, 8003. And we can simply enter in the amount of the payment that we want to make, which is $990. And let's select the functions settlement. Notice in the settlement form all of the invoices for all of the companies are listed below in the grid. You'll see I have one invoice for CEU and two invoices and payments listed for company CEE. Now notice that the amount to settle is going to be um, $990 as I entered in on the journal. The closest that I have to that is this $1,000 invoice so let's go ahead and mark that. And you can see when I include that discount of $10, $10 that's available, uh, my payment is for $990. So we can close the form. And we have settled against across the two companies involved. So now let's do this same payment, but this time let's do it through the payment proposal form. So I'm simply going to go ahead and delete this line so that we can keep working with these invoices. So let's go ahead and delete that. So from our journal form, instead of using um, the lines, let's use the Create Payment Proposal option. Go ahead and we'll actually restrict this to just the vendor that we are working with for this demonstration. We'll go ahead and enter in vendor 8003 in the proposal. And we'll click OK. We'll create this proposal based on both due date and cash date. And you'll notice in the lower portion of this form there is a centralized payments area that allows you to pull vendor invoices from other legal entities. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And we'll just go ahead and select a bank as well to pay that out of. I'll click OK to generate the proposal. And you can see that we have generated three payment proposals. The one that I really care about is this one for the $990. That's what my payment is for. So that's the one I'm going to select. I'll just go ahead and delete uh, these other two proposals. And the second one here. And then I'll go ahead and I'll transfer this remaining one for $990. And that will bring us back into the payment journal. And we'll go back to the lines and you'll see again that the invoice and the payment are matched and settled in that payment journal. And once again I'm going to delete this so that we can continue working with these same invoices. And we'll go take a look at um, settling directly through the settlement form. So I'm going to go back to my vendor, 8003. Under the Invoice tab, I'm going to open up the Settle Open Transactions form and show you how you can simply settle different invoices and payments together without actually going through the payment journal. Um, so again, we're back on the vendor um, 8003. And you'll notice that, again, on this form, all of the payments and invoices for CEU and CEE are shown in this particular form. And in this case, we can look to see that we have a $500 invoice as well as a $500 credit. Um, one is in the CEU company, the other is in the CEE company. So if we simply mark that payment, and then we can apply it against the invoice. Now notice that the $500 invoice has a discount available on it. So our payment of $500 would be too much for that. So we need to make a decision here. We can say, go ahead and accept that payment overage, or we can go ahead and say, we don't need to apply that discount at all. And that's where these options for use cash discount come into play. If I click on this box, you can see that we have normal, always, and never. Normal calculates the discount based on your accounts payable parameters, 
always means it will always take that discount and never means that it will never take the discount. Um, so we'll set that to never. And then I can go ahead and update. And those two transactions will now be settled against each other. Now again, we did that across CEE and CEU, um, creating that centralized payment. That concludes the demonstration of centralized payments. Thank you for your attention.